Hello, I'm Dr. Cecile Cosculuela. Welcome to this English grammar video on the perfect. So um, we now go on to part five. Part five, sorry, of this um, presentation on the perfect. And in so far, we have been focusing basically on the perfect, whether it is associated with the, let me get the pointer, uh, with the, so the perfect, whether it is associated with the present, therefore the present perfect, or the perfect when it is associated with the past tense, so the past perfect, and especially um, most of the examples that we've been dealing with, they were in the simple form, okay? So now we're going to have a closer look at a series of examples with the B plus ING form. Uh, so that means the present perfect B plus ING and also the past perfect B plus ING, but basically this logic, this yeah, this logical system uh, with the B plus ing form on the one hand and the simple form, the simple form, sorry, on the other hand, uh, is the same whether it is associated to the present perfect or to the past perfect, and um, it is also very clear that any time there's the simple form. Uh, well, in any of the four instances where the simple form is used or in any of the conjugations, combinations, tenses in which the B plus ING form is used, well, any time it's always the same meaning, really, that is being expressed. So, uh, associating the associating B plus ING with the present perfect or with the past perfect is not going to be any different from the value of B plus ING when it is associated with uh, the present, for instance, or the past tense. B plus ING always has the same meaning. It has the same invariant always, and its value, its invariant, is the meta inscription, whereas the the invariant of the simple form is the inscription. Um, so these two values are the ones that are always associated with these two operators, B plus ING and uh, the simple form are yeah, they can be associated with any of the, the other orange operators. Or, um, and they also need necessarily to be combined with either the present or the past tense. And they always express the same meaning that of meta inscription for B plus ING, that of inscription for the simple form. And this is a new slide in which I have combined the verb equation with the invariant of each operator. So we can see here B plus ING uh, is the idea of vehicles, the idea of meta inscription, whereas the simple form here um, enables us to express the idea of an inscription. Okay, so there is this logical system inscription versus meta inscription. Uh, let me remind you of what these two concepts refer to. Let's take the simple example of we leave at 7 and we're leaving at 7. So basically the difference is uh, the use of B plus ING or the fact that B plus ING is not used as the simple form here. 
the difference is basically the fact that whenever I want to express a fact given information, refer to some data per se, then I use the simple form. When I say we leave at 7, my objective is to inform of the time at which we're leaving. Whereas when I use we're leaving at 7, it's not about um, it's not about letting somebody know what time we're leaving at. It's about using that time reference in relation to some other ideas. So for instance, we could imagine that everybody is getting ready to leave and then I see that my son has not even started packing. So I tell him, what are you waiting for? We're leaving at seven. And in that case, the, the fact that I'm telling him that we're leaving at seven um, it does not mean that I'm informing him of the hour at which we're leaving. It means that I'm using that information to tell him to hurry up, to tell him to get ready, to tell him that he's not doing the right thing. Okay, so I'm going beyond the mere information here. The point being to use it to tell him to hurry up. Okay, so there's always with B plus ING the idea that I'm relating the information to something else. I'm using it for some other purpose. And in Jean-Pierre Gabilon's grammar book, there are a number of really interesting examples such as, you know, he lives with his girlfriend. I really want to give the information inscribe the data, the data, on the sheet of assertion in the communication space. My point is to give that information for itself, whereas as soon as I'm, I see B plus ING, I know that the point of the speaker is somewhere else. If I say he's living with his girlfriend, that's for some other reason. I go beyond the mere presentation of the facts. And my point might be, for example, to say that it was really difficult for him to make ends meet. Another example would be uh, <clears throat> in that series here. Uh, the daughter asking her mom, have you been watching Oprah again? And again, why is B plus ING used in that sentence? Because the point is that the daughter doesn't really want to know simply if the mom has been doing that. What she really wants to know is uh, she wants to understand why her mom's attitude, why her mom is behaving the weird way she is with her. So she's asking the question to understand her mom's behavior, not to ask for some information for itself. It goes beyond the information. It is a meta inscription, meta in Greek meaning beyond. Okay, and we could compare have you been watching Oprah with have you watched Oprah, which would be used if we were merely interested in the facts. Uh, <clears throat> in this uh, image, we can see that uh, this woman is speaking and what is she asking him? Does she really want to know if he has been working out? What she wants to say is that she's impressed by how strong he looks, by how muscled he is, muscular he is, and therefore she's not focusing on facts themselves, which would be the case if she had said, have you worked out? She would simply want to know whether he has or not. But in this case, she's going beyond the facts and referring to how impressed she is by the way he looks. So basically, that's the logic 
um, that helps us understand the difference between the B plus ING form and the simple form. And what we're stating here um, is what Henry Adamshevsky put forth in his work in the second half of the 20th century and that we are revisiting in the light of semiotics. So let us apply this basic principle. Um, here are some examples. Désolé d'être en retard, j'ai fait de la voile avec un ami. So let's ask ourselves this question. Désolé d'être en retard, am I stating a fact? Is the discourse going forward? So is it going towards the right? Est-ce que le discours est orienté à droite? Uh, or is my point not to state a mere fact, but to say that in relation to something else, in which case it would be a meta-inscription and not an inscription. So I need to ask myself that question. And um, désolé d'être en retard, I'm just saying that for to give that information for itself. So uh, it's going towards the right, I'm stating facts, and the discourse is progressing towards the right, I'm giving more information. Um, what is going on with the second part of the sentence? J'ai fait de la voile avec un ami. Am I stating a fact for itself? and given more information or is that information already on the in the communication space on the sheet of assertion and i'm explaining something else i'm saying it in relation to something else okay so clearly here do i want to inform my co-speaker of the fact that i've been sailing or am I stating that fact to explain why I'm late? Clearly, here the arrow is pointed towards the left. And once I have made that analysis, I know that the, the arrow pointed to the right is the symbol for the simple form. And the arrow pointed to the left is the symbol for the B plus ING form. So now I just have to translate. Sorry I'm late. I've been sailing with a friend. And it's the same logic really as the one we have in any other instance of B plus ING as opposed to the simple form. We're going beyond the mere facts anytime we use the B plus ING form. So when I say I've been doing that, I've been sailing with a friend, I'm explaining why I'm sorry to be late. I'm explaining why I'm late. Uh, next example, toi, tu as vu trop de films. So, uh, what's the point of the speaker here? Why is that sentence uh, mentioned? Is the point to um, tell somebody, you know, he was uh, supposed to watch two movies and he's been watching three, so uh, he, he saw too many of them? Uh, or is the point to go beyond the facts and not simply state a fact but go beyond the facts and use this idea of uh, watching movies to say something else. So for instance that you're, you're wrong, you're imagining things that are not correct. Okay? And that second interpretation here I think we can easily reach and therefore, we know we need to use the B plus ING form. J'ai déjà tapé huit lettres. So again, am I giving some information for itself or am I referring to something else? Well, uh, nothing here tells me that uh, I'm stating anything other than facts. Therefore, 
I'm, uh, yeah, the arrow here clearly is not pointing in the right direction, okay? So I hope you're all really focusing and following the theoretical principle. So this is a mistake. I've already typed eight letters. The arrow should be pointed to the right because we're merely stating facts. In the next example, je n'en peux plus. That's what I'm focusing on. J'ai tapé des lettres toute la matinée. Is that other elements that I'm referring to for themselves? I'm mentioning more information or am I using this information in relation to the first part here? Well, obviously, I'm explaining why I'm exhausted. Therefore, I've been typing letters all morning will be the appropriate translation. Regarde ce que tu as fait. Il y a du lait partout. Again, I am methodological and I ask myself the right questions. Regarde ce que tu as fait. Am I stating that as a fact? Or am I referring to facts in relation to something else? Well, here, clearly, I'm pointing to what he's done. So look what you've done. Look at the facts. There's milk all over. Whereas when Paul comes back from school and he's really covered in mud, his mom's going to ask him, mais qu'est-ce que tu as fait? Meaning what? Does she want to know that he did this and then he did that? Obviously not. What she wants is, is to tell him that this is really not possible. He needs to make sure it never happens again and there's no way he can come back home in such a state. So what have you been doing? Okay. Um, so A says he got off the plane and fell down. And B's reaction is, oh dear, had he drunk or had he been drinking? So if I choose the first one, had he drunk, I'm really focusing on facts regardless of anything else. All I want to know is the facts. I want some information. And if I say, had he been drinking, then it means that I'm wondering why he fell down and it's relative to that point that I'm asking the question. So clearly here, that is the case. Had he been drinking? Um, next example, when I got there, he looked really angry, very angry. He had waited or he had been waiting for almost an hour, you know. So again, am I saying that he had waited just to, um, just to make a fact clear? I'm, I'm giving some information or I'm pointing to something else using the information. Okay, so clearly here I'm focusing on how angry he was and I want to explain why therefore the fact that he had waited is not a mere fact that I'm going over, I'm using it in relation to something else. Therefore, it's not just an inscription, it is a meta inscription. Okay. There was no chocolate left. He had eaten it all. He had been eating it all. So in this case, um, this is a little bit more difficult though. In this case, there was no chocolate left. He had eaten all the chocolate. I'm just presenting facts and it's easier to understand it if we compare it to the next uh, sentence and of course he was sick during the night so in this case I'm focusing on how sick he was why was he sick so the next sentence is not about stating more facts as in number 39 the sentence right before the the next point I want to make is all about explaining why he was sick 
Therefore, the right choice here is he had been eating too much chocolate. And last but not least, let's have a look at this sentence here about Gerald Hasher, 38, is head of the hoofed animal at London Zoo, where he has worked for the past 20 years. This is a really interesting sentence that you will find in the work of Henry Adamczewski and Jean-Pierre Gabilon, which is interesting because for when you see for the past 20 years, then you tend to think if you are used to using traditional explanations that such a long length of time will necessarily imply that the that you use the B plus ING form and we can see that here it is clearly not the case. Is that surprising at all? Not at all because the point here is to state a fact. Therefore, the simple form is required because we want to focus on the facts. So it's the same really a uh, logic that's behind this sentence as the one that's behind we leave at seven or sorry I'm late or you know all the other examples that we could go over and uh, I guess we'll go over more examples uh, in our next video <laughs> because um, yes maybe we need to take a little break thank you for your attention and we'll go on working on the perfect in the next video I'll see you then thank you and make sure you keep on working um, so as to improve your English I wish you all the best